So we're back at the full bench. We're playing with some 600 Hollies. So what we're gonna do is, we're working with New Guy's Garage, and he's gonna modify this one. We did some baseline testing on it, and we have a master to correct for uh, weather correction. So basically, when you run a full bench or set it up, your numbers are gonna be different day to day, and this old carburetor is going to um, give us accurate data per the day, the same day that we run this carburetor. Baseline testing showed that this carburetor will outflow our dry flow bench. Best we could do was 16.2 inches of water. Now keep in mind a four barrel is flowed at 20.4 inches of water, which translates to one and a half inches of mercury. So we're gonna take several points uh, at 15 and a half, 14, 13, and 12 so that we can have uh, numbers to compare to after the modifications. We're trying to pick enough numbers knowing that when this carb gets opened up, you're gonna flow more air at lesser depression values. So you could go off your curve if you didn't choose enough points. I got back this Holly 600 from New Guy's Garage with all the modifications he wanted to do. We've cut off, or he's cut off the choke horn and has done some throttle shaft work underneath. Some light cleanup and also cleaned up the tops of the screw heads. We're going to bring this back to the Superflow 600 and see what it does. So it's a new day at the bench, so we're going to run the master again. And the master on this day was within one CFM of our original day. So it proved to us that everything is okay and our numbers don't need to be offset by the weather. Remember when I said you should have enough points to look back on? Well, at 12 inches of water on the flow bench, we maxed it out at 580 CFM. And this is roughly uh, about 84 CFM more than prior to the modifications. So we took more measurements at 11 inches and 10 inches just so that we have them for future reference. Looking back on this, we probably should have been using this tapered four-hole spacer all along. We took some baseline values with the spacer and the carburetor picked up like it should, about a 9 CFM at 11 inches, which trends with the previous testing I've done with the style spacer. With the four-hole spacer, you can just tape one side off and measure front and rear barrels independently. We took several data points at different depression levels and then float it at 20.4 inches of water, which is the rating of the carburetor. The primary side of the carburetor flowed 346. We flipped the carburetor around to test the secondary side through the spacer. And that's when we noticed that we had a vacuum leak the entire time. So since I noticed it, I'm going to show you how significant or insignificant a vacuum leak like this is on a wide open throttle application at rated flow. If you watch the screen, it starts off at 383 and as soon as I remove my finger, the flow goes up to 385. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like not real life. No. But it did it. And the, seeing 84 CFM gain at 12 inches of depression with just these mods, I'm a little, little surprised. Mm -hmm. That's a 12 inch depression. And I think as we, if the bench was capable, if we increase depression, this separation is going to grow bigger. Because we've reduced restriction, and as our depression increases, we're going to see more CFM flow rate than this delta from 496 to 580 at the same depression, I think you're going to see that the lines don't converge. You're going to come further and further apart. Just based on pressure drop through a pipe, which is essentially what we've got, if we've reduced restriction here, we're going to see even bigger gains at a bigger depression. You know, that's how you go into these things, right? Like, you can't 
<laughs> what are you going to do? You didn't test 11 million different points? No, you're not. You, you <laughs> start and you make some choices and then you get deep and then you say, mm -hmm. those 11 million points uh, probably would have been worthwhile. So a little bit about booster signal. Our airflow went up and our booster signal went up, which means that the fuel circuit might actually try to keep up with the airflow. It might actually work. So we've tested, we've ran our master again, and this master compared to the last time we tested was within one CFM of today. So we know that our numbers are pretty darn good uh, for this carburetor. We, you know, rough calculation is probably about 80 CFM, um, and that's just very little, uh, little work done to it. It's something that anybody can try and, and do. So here's the full transparent data set. We'll have the booster numbers off because it clutters up the screen. Uh, we also messed up on getting two pairs of unmodified versus modified data sets for the booster. Uh, I can say that at 12 inches of, of water, we the booster pulled almost an inch more if you compare 12 inches to, to 13 inches of unmodified. Um, it just means that it's moving more air and the booster's responding. A couple of the key uh, pairs I have I have um, bolded here. Um, this is where we get the, the 84 um, number between 496 and 580. It's at 12 inches. Another number that um, you should compare is what the spacer did. It's roughly about 11 inches of, of CFM, which um, the spacer tends to do. We've seen it on the 950 Holly test. And then when you split the carburetor up at rated flow, you, know, you have the, the 346, 383. Those are some pretty big numbers for this carburetor, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's 729, which is pretty good. You also have to keep in mind that on a dry flow bench, you're not losing energy to uh, picking up fuel. A wet flow bench will always flow a little bit less because you have that energy loss and that volume loss. Uh, you can play games with, with the numbers. This is in the two barrel form, but you can add these numbers together the 284 and the 256, and uh, it's always a little bit less than than these numbers here. Your four barrel configuration, if we were able to have a flow bench that would pull to 20.4 inches, we'd probably get a number that's a little bit higher than 729, but it's just a number. We're really looking for the deltas, and, and at 12 inches, you have that 80 CFM delta that's probably going to carry through. Another thing to be aware of, on the other video I did with the Holly 950, uh, the throttle shaft rework. Um, the throttle shaft I started off with was pretty pretty well modified. It, it was stepped, but I thinned it out even more. Probably got around 10 CFM. So that was pretty aggressive. Um, we might be able to get a little bit more CFM out of this if we did more throttle shaft work. The 80 CFM didn't come from just the light touch up from the throttle shaft. It, Choke horn was the primary driver, and you know, if you have a choke horn on your carburetor and you're restricted at your carburetor, cutting your choke horn off is going to free up a lot of airflow. Probably 40 to 60 CFM, maybe. All the numbers are fun to work look at. Um, it'd be really interesting to see uh, this carburetor on an engine or um, use an application just to see how well it works and. Um, how good the, the fuel circuit side is with keeping up. He's got more to say. Yeah, well, I, I'm gonna tell you, just pulling straight rectal extraction at 20.4 inches of water column, which is 1.5 inches of mercury for anyone who wants to debate, I will almost guarantee that this is probably 300,000 Reynolds numbers, which is 100X the transition from laminar to turbulent flow.